Okay, thank you guys. We've had some amazing sessions today. I think we've covered a lot. Uh, obviously up here we're talking about the ever evol evolving role of a fashion photographer, but I think we're coming off the backs of some incredible sessions on the evolution of creative management, the evolution of uh, video editing and e-com, evolution of post-production. Um, and so now we're gonna focus in on photography, uh, specifically fashion photography. We thought that Elisa would be perfect to join us up here with over a decade of experience uh, working both in-house and also freelance and across a number of brands. So um, just to kick us off, Elisa, I would love to um, just hear your journey. Maybe you can share some of the uh, major projects you've worked on so far. Sure. So um, uh, my main like education would be more related to cinema and marketing, actually. And then after that, I focused more onto photography, and I started more uh, in artistic photography, actually. And then at the end, I went to fashion photography, and my first like uh, jobs were like editorial. So I would like travel to do like some shootings, and then um, after having this uh, this content, I got um, like hired uh, with Mango. We are a bunch of people from Mango here, <laughs> actually. So, and Mango was like my first big like uh, house where I uh, learned everything about like fashion photography, how. Uh, um, online department works, and and actually we 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 got like uh, when I started uh, and when I, I finally went out, uh, we we had like a huge like change, and I, it was just three years, but I I saw how it changed like during these three years, and then afterwards I got freelance, and now it's been almost three years and a half being freelance and working with different brands such as uh, Ralph Lauren, Massimo Dutti, uh, My Teresa, um, uh, M&S, uh, so brands like Spanish brands and also like international ones, yeah. Great, fantastic. Um, and I guess just diving into evolution, so over you know, the last years, like how, how do you feel like your role has really evolved? And you know, are any industry trends, anything that really sticks out to you? Yeah, so actually I would take like my experience in Mango as an example of how the, the it changed. So the role as a photographer and also the the online theme and team and everything. So we started like in a really like small studio with like small team and like small budget. And then uh, we after three years we had like a massive studio, a massive team and much more budget. So uh, at the beginning, it was like I would say more product focused, and so uh, would be ecom would be ecom, and then campaigns and image would be campaigns and image, and in my point of view, uh, an ideal uh, way of thinking it would be a mix. So as a brand, you create um, a concept, and then it's. Uh, done by the ecom team or by, by the campaign team, but it should be like more merged. So what I what I saw when I was working in Mango, it's like the ecom team would got like would get bigger. So at the beginning, we were shooting like more just ecom on the studio, more product focused, and then at the end we ended up shooting like more lookbooks and 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 uh, like images that would be more editorialish, and and. I thought it was really interesting because on there we could like uh, create, as we were like small team, so just the online team, but we would create like our briefs, uh, our ideas, and and at the end they got like in you know in in stores, not just online. Mm -hmm. So it's it's I think the way of thinking it, it's not separating it, but just merging it a little bit more. Of course, they have like different, so online would be like something that needs to be done faster and et cetera. But I think thinking about it as a, you know, yeah. yeah. We, I think that at a lot of the recent flow events we've had this year, um, both in New York and LA, we've been talking about the emergence of um, yeah. a lot of brands moving towards elevated PDP and really merging kind of more the editorial side of the house with standard e-com and really seeing that come together. Yeah. So makes a lot of sense. I guess that when it comes to approach, um, you know, now as a freelancer, you're taking on uh, editorial projects, pro you know, more commercial projects. 
Can you maybe just talk a little bit about your approach for different content types and how you're thinking about that these days? Yeah, so um, actually it's, it doesn't differ that much. It's, it's quite uh, similar. So I would do uh, a big research uh, on the topic, even if it's an editorial or artistic or commercial. So I do my research. So when it's a commercial job, of course, uh, I, I am given a, a brief sometimes and then <laughs> um, so but even though I have that brief um, I like to uh, search like more references that uh, so what can I offer to that brand or to that point of view or to that concept so it's uh, me mixing like with the brand's brief you know uh, on an editorial it depends if it's like commission or submission, but if it's submission, so then I, I would create like the whole idea. But actually, a, a briefing like from a mood, a mood board from a, a commercial job or an editorial job, sometimes it's not that different. So I try to take into account like um, all the steps. So it would be like uh, from uh, photography references to casting to location to styling. So take everything into account, so I do it like for both sort of uh, jobs or works. Uh, artistic ones could be like slightly more um, yeah, different. Uh, actually, sometimes I prefer to be given a brief so as a starting point, so you are not um, like artistic and thinking like from scratch, and sometimes it can be more difficult to be like creative completely, even for being a creative, I guess, yeah. I guess that's you know touch, you're touching on the on the freelance side, and you also have the in-house experience. But you're talking, um, you know, you're typically you're giving you know, you're giving a brief for the freelance work. I guess in-house can be the same, but you can also have a, a clean slate. Mm -hmm. I know any like process differences that you can touch on, you know, between the, the in-house and freelance? Yeah. So um, I think um, when when I was like uh, in-house in in Mango, actually. I think it's it's not that um, common in general with uh, big multinational brands, but at that time, as we were like uh, creating a big uh, online um, team, so we would be able to do our own briefings uh, mixed with the stylist and our director. But sometimes you are normally given the brief. So at that time, we created the brief. We we decided the location, the light. Even we can we could propose like casting and things that normally are not that common uh, as an in-house. And then as a freelance, um, I'm giving uh, normally the brief. Um, sometimes I'm asked like some art, more art direction, like um, uh, aspects of the of the concept. But normally I'm given the, the brief, but in terms of the shooting, actually, normally I feel quite free of doing w w what I think. And it's funny because sometimes it's you would think like bigger brands would be like more, <laughs> you need to do this. And it's actually the contrary. So I would say when I worked like for bigger brands, they were like, do your thing. And sometimes like smaller or maybe some that are not that fashion focused, maybe um, they are like, yeah, no, we need this and we need this. So, um, yeah, I guess it, 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 it's a mix and you need to, to, <laughs> to flow with the, with the client. But it's, uh, yeah, it's curious sometimes when they give you all this freedom and instead of a photographer, you, you look like a director on a set, you know, and you, they make you decide almost everything. And like, yeah, it's fighting, but <laughs> well, okay. I yeah. guess um, kind of talking about that role as a director, right? I mean, in your in your work now, you know, you're working across a ton of different teams when you come into a project, um, potentially up and down different management levels, things like that. Um, I don't know. Can you talk to us a little bit, like how you navigate those relationships? You know, how you can basically set yourself up for success uh, when going into new jobs and projects? Yeah. So. Um Normally, so as a photographer, you normally talk with the creative team. You don't deep on the design team or the sales team or like um, more product. Like um, so, you are more like with the art director, sometimes a client. And but yeah, it's always and for me, even for being part of the creative team, I have this like sort of 
holistic view. So for me, it's important both the product but also the creativity. But um, I can tell there's this like sort of battle sometimes, even on set, um, that uh, could be like between the client or the uh, the art director. So. I guess uh, as a photographer, uh, at least me, I try to balance these um, these two walls, sort of. I, I wouldn't say two walls, but you know, so um, so to make them work and to make them understand each other, and so some pains, I guess, uh, it would be, especially these. I could tell more w in my experience in manga because then with the other brands, I can deep that much on what how they do things. But so in Mango sometimes would have, I don't know, so the design team, hey, this, this piece is really important, but then the stylist, I want to put that piece on, se <laughs> on the shoot. And then, um, yeah, let's gonna do like this amazing like layout. And then no, the website doesn't allow that. No, but yeah, so there are like lots of things that you need to take into account when you are shooting. It's not just you doing your creative stuff. It's, uh, there are a lot of people involved. So um, uh, even I am from the creative team, I, I try to think like there are like lots of uh, people involved and lots of, you know, normally efforts and, and money put on that shoot. So you, ne you need to be aware of that, I think, yeah. Got it. Um, we had a fantastic session earlier uh, focusing on video, and you know, we've been hearing a lot about um, large volume, you know, scalable video projects these days. And as a photographer, I would love to know, you know, do you have any advice on working with video teams, and you know, with your role, you know, collaborating with a video team to produce content for the same type of product, things like that. So in this, I see like uh, two quite different like approaches uh, from the brands uh, on on the video, like. Uh, concept so sometimes it's really like together created with the photography uh, mood board so they have things like quite clear and it's on the brief and you know what the videographer is doing and even sometimes um, the brand or the art director would ask me which videographer you want to work with um, because actually it's meant to be you know like two people creating content so it's meant to be like quite together but in general it goes like really separately and for me it would say it's quite weird because we are both creating uh, content of the same in just different languages um, and I think it, there should be like slightly more communication on what you're doing on photography and what you're doing on video because sometimes you think yeah video can be more narrative or not it can be like more about details or or so I think y you need to see uh, what photography is communicating and what video is communicating on that shoot. And uh, I don't know, like thinking on the layout, how, how do you want to like put it? So I think if you have that, um, um, the concept before the shoot, because sometimes it's on set, it's like, yeah, the video offer is going to do la la la, and then it pops in and I'm shooting, you know? So I think it could be like more like teamwork in these terms. And also video, it's getting like bigger as we like um, so, and and not just the video that you s that it's more like inspirational, but also like more like techie videos or you know Instagram and TikTok and Be Real and everything. So all this content sometimes it's just done like yeah yeah we need to do this. So maybe and the photography it's like the photography. So sometimes. I think we should like take into account that all this content that it's more related to video, it's getting important and how we merge that on the shoot. Um, Sounds like taking the time to slow down, really align the team, yeah, making sure yeah. everybody has a clear objective with how the content's going to be used in different formats. Yeah, exactly. Okay, um, I guess you know, 2022, you know, when you're going to a brand and like, or work, starting to work on a new project, you know. I would like to know just what is your ideal production process like? You know, from, from hey, showing up on the day of the shoot to you know, getting everything through post. Yeah. So you can just walk us through that. What's your ideal so world these days? My wish list. Uh, no, um, communication would be like <laughs> on the top. Uh, I think miscommunication would be like 90% of the problems that can appear like during the pre-production, the production and the post-production. So on pre-production, uh, I think it's important so to use the tools that we have, like even an email, but explain on the email 
what are we doing, when are we doing, so quite like structured. Sometimes it's like, do this, and it's like when or where. Or and as we are working like as freelancers, we, we so, uh, sometimes I know the brand because I've already worked with them, but sometimes I don't. So it's, it's like every shoot, it's your first day at, your, at work. So imagining this, I think it's important to have, for example, a meeting, like a, a Zoom meeting, or uh, something to get to know a little bit the team. Normally there is this call, but sometimes there's not, and it makes a huge difference on, on, on how then the shoot it's like, um, it, it works or, or, or not. And during the production, I would say um, having a good producer, it's, um, yeah, top, because um, I have a little bit this production mind too, so I'm uh, coming from the cinema where everything is kind of, you know, set and you're, you're rolling this today, etc. So um, I think it's important to have uh, time really organized, etc. So um, if I have some, someone like leading that, for me it's uh, really like I can just don't think about it and just think on the creative process, but uh, yeah, sometimes you, yeah, you you see like, do you know what time are we gonna have lunch or how many looks have we done? So all these things need to be like, uh, um, uh, some some someone needs to think about that, and it's cool if it's not me, <laughs> then uh, then I can just focus like on on photography. But yeah, right. just having yeah, and then on post production, I would say, so it it's nice that the selection, for example, it's done during the shoot or at least. Yeah, um, n not like uh, that there's a timeline and also there's communication for post-production. So even though if it, the post-production is done in-house, it's cool when uh, all the people that have been on the shoot can be like involved somehow. And because it, at the end, it's the end of your work. So it's nice to know how it's going to flow. And, and, and sometimes when I do the, my team does the research, so um, it's sometimes it can get like little, so it, 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 I don't know, it, it's, it's cool that everything is like with a timeline, so round one that day, round two this day, and then delivery this day, yeah. I know in the call leading up to this, to prep a little bit, we've, I mean, trust and communication were definitely yeah. a reoccurring theme, and it sounds like a lot, especially you know, you're working with a lot of different stakeholders, um, potentially, you know, at the different brands, and of course, so, yeah, it sounds like that kind of pre-work yeah. is instrumental to having that, that day, I guess it goes without, without saying, but. Um, and then, I don't know, any common pain points or friction, even, you know, hey, we're trying to set ourselves up for success, um, but I don't know, what, what are the common challenges you're coming across today? Is that going back to the communication side of things? Anything else coming, come to mind? On the shoot, you yeah. mean, for example. So um, sometimes the lack of honesty <laughs> would be like, so as someone that it's a little bit more straight to the point, like, yes, I like this hair, I like this, or um, because uh, if if they are like, yeah, I'm not liking it, but I'm not saying why. <laughs> uh, it's uh, uh, me as a photographer. I can decide. I, there are some decisions that I cannot take. So it's. It's cool when people are honest and, 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 and can say, yeah, in, of course, in a nice way. And, and, but just we are all like mature and we are all working. So it's nice to say, yeah, I would prefer this or shall we try this? And yeah, and also like, yeah, when people get stressed, <laughs> it's totally, because shoot, of course, it's like completely, like it's not like an office day, it's really, it, it's easy to that it's like some tension, but I think like keeping it positive, having like um, I don't know, like a good attitude, being proactive, uh, also like um, I don't know, like really teamwork. It sounds cliche, but if you take into account, so you ask the makeup artist, what do you want to do with these, or uh, what do you want to? So I'm, I'm, I think like communication again, it's 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 really important. Um, yeah. So you need to be really focused on the shooting day because uh, if it's, for example, outdoors, so the sun sets at a certain hour, <laughs> you know, so you need to rush and uh, you have like lots of money invested on the, that shoot on, on big brands and big casting. It's 
lot of money. So I think it's important to be slightly organized. Mm. Also having the, the flexibility to improvise, but having a plan and being like a little bit straightforward, yeah. Great, thank you. Um, and you know, just wrapping up, I also would like to just hear from you about some of the more challenging or the most challenging mm. project that you've taken on in your career so far. And do you have any learnings that you can share with us about that? So um, I guess I would say uh, it was uh, three or four years ago, and I think it was like maybe my second or third job as a freelance, and it would be for Ralph Lauren. And I haven't done, you know, normally to get into some runs, you did some in between. So I, I didn't, and then so they, they asked me to go uh, there to shoot like a couple of days. So for me, it was a big thing, like traveling for work. I, I, I've been in New York before, but like for work and like not being able to bring my own team, uh, like my normally here I have some assistants that I work with and, and now I have assistants that I know in, in London or Munich or, or uh, New York but at that time I didn't know anyone there so working with a completely new team it was like really challenging and you know you're there you have a little bit of jet lag so it, it was like a huge thing and then the team would be like I don't know they were like 40 on set so you had like uh, seven set, uh, set designers, three makeup artists, I don't know, so many people. I was like with my coffee, like, yeah. So it, it was like kind of challenging, but at the end, so I, I tried to even like to think on jobs, even if it's a, a Nikon shoot or a campaign or a lookbook, I try to put like all my effort on that. So I don't make differences on if it's like a super massive campaign or a Nikon shoot. I try to be like, Quite just uh, focused and motivated, but that one was a yeah, was a big, big thing. <laughs> yeah. And it sounds like you know going back a lot of the hey, showing up new team don't have those relationships, don't have that. Yeah, trust. exactly. Just the importance of that and trying to really establish that before you you get on the ground. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. I think we have a couple minutes here, but um, we are going to open up for questions. So would love to hear what you guys have to say here. Um, Let's go. Okay, so let's start at the top. What would you say makes a good producer? Hmm. Um, so I would say it's someone that, that it's like quick and, and, and proactive. And so uh, he or she sees the problems before they are actually a problem. So um, they are like constantly of aware of what's going on in the shoot. And um, also keep it like nice. So it's really weird to see a producer stressed because they are should be like you know like a little bit like yoga my <laughs> you know. And it's it's good that they are nice, but also they are like focused and so you can like relay on them. And yeah, sometimes they are like mummies or daddies. So it's like that's good. Okay, we're getting some of these questions upvoted here. So, um, what do you expect from the clients as a freelancer? And what things do you value that make your work easier, smoother, and more enjoyable? What do you expect from clients as a freelance in, um, in terms of... Uh, uh, the question, maybe potentially, like, what, what are you expecting them to maybe give you, or I mean, in terms of the brief, I don't know if anyone wants to clarify on that. Oh, there, <laughs> but it, maybe. It's basically the same as the new producer, like what you expect from clients, the plans, no? How the clients can make the work uh, in a more environment or how you feel more comfortable. Yeah, sure. So I, I think it's a mix of uh, they have uh, the things quite clear, what they want, but also being quite flexible and open to my view of that concept or should. Because if they are totally flexible, sometimes it's like, yeah, but do you w what do you want? And it's, and, and it's someone that says, yeah, this, we have the picture, you know? I mean, it can be myself, but it's cool when, when, when they are involved. And if they are like maybe to like, structured or too pushy or like tight on then you feel that you can do what you want it's not that i want to do like my you know artistic work but it, it's cool that 
that, that you can have a little bit of freedom and also that helps to the shoot to go smoothly and uh, the relationship with the model it's much more smooth because if they are like really like pushy actually a shoot should be I don't know I, I think it of like a director and an actress somehow like so it's something that needs to flow and needs to work even though if it's a six euros like shirt what you're shooting it's it's something that needs to be like uh, inspirational so it's cool when you have this sort of nice uh, environment yeah great um, going back to I guess elevated here so talking about the merge between e-com and editorial, how do you think smaller brands with less resources can also adapt to this approach? Yeah, so sometimes, uh, yeah, you think like budget is everything, but it's just um, having the ideas clear and knowing what what are your resources uh, like realistically? Because sometimes it's, we want to do this and this and this and this and this sort of casting and it's like, this is really expensive. And you don't need to feel less because you don't have that. I think uh, just to adapt to what you have and, 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 and be able to do the same, so create a briefing and, and, and check what are, I don't know, like free locations, for example. There are models who are like starting who would be like, really like powerful it doesn't matter of doing like a good casting and also with uh, photographers uh, and yeah and the rest of the so it's uh, i think you can get a really nice and, and sometimes smaller brands would, would would do like things that look like even fresher and more uh, you know actual than than um updated than, than bigger brands because you have many res you Lim don't have limit, that many limit those resources to exactly get creativity flowing, right? exactly so. I mean yeah okay um, we've got a pro provocative one here so where do you see fashion photographers in five to ten years and will AI force an evolution in the field for both photography and models we'll all force an evolution in field for I mean, you see, uh, well and, uh, and maybe I don't know if you're seeing that at, uh, at all today but um, yeah, I would love to know um, any thoughts on that. So, I guess, um, so before they were like, I think they were just like photography focused and quite techy, and uh, which I love too, but I think you need to be um, more open to this, what we were speaking, that there's a whole team behind, so you are not a super creative on the shoot, you need to take into account that that there's like a whole uh, stakeholders behind and, and 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 that you just can be like this crea creative thing. So you need to take into account the product and the design and the sales and everything. So, um, yeah, actually, I, I don't know how I imagine. I don't know, me being there, I guess. No hopefully. <laughs> Let's go to um, what do you prefer? So digital or film? From an aesthetic point of view. Yeah, so for my own project or editorial, I, I would go uh, for film and I use uh, medium format. And But it's not like uh, I don't shoot digital because for some shoots, you can just shoot on film everything. It, it wouldn't be realistic. So I think it's... Uh, um, a matter of knowing what to use in which situation. I mean, for me, of course, like uh, film, it's uh, it's better, and also it it makes you shoot in another way. So you need to shoot like slowly, uh, and then so I also sometimes I do my print. So it's sort of more like um, yeah, old guy style, which I kind of like. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. We've actually been seeing a lot of film being sent our way for yeah. to be retouched recently. So yeah. making a comeback as well on the even on the e com side. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, what's the biggest client or campaign that you've turned down and why? Turned down means <laughs> said no to. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if you want to touch on that, but uh, uh. <laughs> maybe we don't need to name, maybe we don't name names maybe we keep that uh, anonymous uh, so um yeah so <laughs> um so n n it just happened like once or yeah once I would say but um so yeah that there was a client who had like some uh, ethics on on set and regarding to the casting and to the comments they would do during the shoot and and for example they normally you use references but uh, 
uh, that shoot they were like just copying images so I don't felt comfortable with that so in my mind I guess uh, I'm not going to work with them again keep that integrity but I'm not saying the name of course um, and yeah we touched on this uh, just quickly but maybe you can just explain you know what is the ideal brief what's a good brief from your perspective yeah, um, so of course you don't want to have like uh, 40 pages like um, <laughs> of information, but for me, as much information as possible is good. Um, so um, you you have a uh, the concept that maybe can be like written, but not like you know a novel, just like a few like um, sentences. So uh, photography references, also styling references. It's nice. To have the collection itself for me, it's really important because then I know what we are shooting. So even though I'm not the stylist, I like to know like what, what's going to happen. Uh, having the casting or at least the options, uh, location, um, the video, like script, um, the formats they need, <laughs> um, where these images are going to go, uh, the timings. Yeah, I guess this. Yeah. Thank you. And then, um, yeah, when it comes to models, do you like to guide the models acting? And do you think that's something that's part of a photographer's role or responsibility? Definitely. Um, um, I think it's part of the photographer's role. Um, but how I should, I would say it's like, it depends on the model. So um, if they are quite uh, new phase or, well, Sometimes new faces can move like really like cool, but it depends of if you see that they move like already really cool how they move and it suits the brand and the concept. So I just let them flow, and at some point I ask do that or do that. But I like that they just free and can do whatever they feel because this way I think it feels real. And for me, like having honesty on the pictures I take, it's quite important. So so yeah, um, but I'm not like do this, do this, do this because otherwise. They are like, uh, just sometimes that um, maybe the client is like, mm, yeah. <laughs> so slightly like pushing on timing. So uh, I let the model work a little bit, but then I'm, oh, we need to go this way if it's getting like too commercial or something. But I also like to show the briefs to the models because for example, the models don't have anything when they go on set. And it's quite curious because you would imagine an actress without the script. So for me, it's almost the, the same, like they don't know anything about what they're gonna do. And sometimes they are not shown even a brief. And it's, so I try to show them what we're gonna do so they know what we are doing, yeah. Okay, well, fantastic. Well, I think um, if there's no additional questions. We are going to wrap here. So let's give Elisa a round of applause. Thank you. All right.